Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost and I'm an Airtable and Zapier consultant. In this video, we're going to be doing a high level overview of the Kanban view as it is used in Airtable. So if you are new to Airtable and you realize that there's some unlocked potential in there that you haven't quite figured out yet, uh, I would definitely recommend checking this out. We're going to be showing you how the Kanban view is so, so useful and really helps with any kind of system or process that you might have in your business. All right, so as I mentioned, we are gonna be doing a bit of a deep dive on the Kanban view here. So let's jump on in. So, all right, in our very simple example, we just have a few fields. We have a name of person, we have their email, and then we have an option number. And something to note here is that the option number is a specific type of field. It's the single select field. Currently, we have three different options, one, two, and three. And so this, of course, is the grid view. The grid view is the default view. And by default, every time you create a new table, I'm going to start off with this grid view. So going to add a new view is quite simple. It's just a simple click. We have a grid, a form, a calendar, a gallery, and then the Kanban, which we're talking about in this video. So let's go ahead and create a new view under the Kanban view. And uh, it's going to, as it says here, display our records uh, as cards on a Kanban board. So here we go. You see the first thing that we see is it's choosing us, it's asking us to choose a grouping field. And the grouping field can be one of two field types, either a single select field, which just so happens we had as the option number, which you see here, or a collaborator field. So if you were sharing this base uh, with multiple people, you could build a Kanban view uh, and use each collaborator as an individual stack. So uh, we have the option of choosing a single select field or a collaborator field that we already have in our base or, or in our table, or we can add a new one of either of those fields. So let's start off by taking a look at what the option number would look like. So we're going to select the option number and you'll see that each of those records, we had five different records of people. Each of those records is now in a card format. So this section here, instead of being a row of data in a grid, it's now a card of data in a Kanban view. And it's organized in stacks. And the stacks are dictated by whatever that single select field was. We can expand our records just as we can in the grid view by clicking on them and we see all of the data that is relevant to this particular uh, record, as well as the audit trail and any notes or in, in comments off to the side here. So that's true for all of these. Now, a couple cool things we can do with these cards. We can customize what is showing up on the card. So if you've got a ton of data and you don't want it to all show up here, that's fine. You can select uh, to turn these different pieces of uh, the different fields off so that they're not showing up. So here, now we just have the name of each card. And that is unavoidable. Whatever that primary uh, field is, that's the leftmost column in your grid, that's the primary field, that is what the name will always show up as. Uh, but let's go ahead and keep this. You'll see that option number is turned off by default because obviously we're stacked by that option number, so it's kind of redundant to present that as well. But that's how this works. We can add additional stacks here uh, simply by you know, clicking there and typing what we want that new stack to be. So now we have a fourth option. This is obviously related to the same, it's the exact same data on the grid view. So if we go back to that grid view, now we see that this, this option has changed to option four because we moved it in the Kanban. So this is talking to itself. It's all the same data. It's just how you're presenting the data and how it shows up. So that's uh, pretty straightforward. If we wanted to create new records, we can do it by clicking on the plus here. And if we click on the plus in a particular column or stack, uh, you'll see what happens is that our option number is automatically set to be that stack. So this will be person number six, and they might have example six at email. So let's take a look at that and you know there they are they're showing up great in that stack already because we chose to add them here so that is in a nutshell how you can kind of navigate through a kanban uh, and of course these are interchangeable just by clicking and dragging as we saw earlier so that is 
how we would set up a Kanban with an existing uh, with an existing single select field. But let's set up another one here, and let us see how a Kanban is really useful if we are doing a system or a process that we're trying to uh, trace throughout our business. So let's create a new single select field and let's imagine that we have a company that is, um, maybe they're in shipping. So an order is received and then they kind of package that order up, ship it out, and then it's completed. So let's take a look at, at how we might uh, build a Kanban for this. So we would have a status of these different um, orders, let's say, or, or uh, however we're calling the records. So we have a status of that, and so we can create these stacks, and let's say we have those three that we just mentioned. Let's go ahead and rename this stack. This is going to be uh, order received, and then we'll rename this one to order packaged, and we'll rename this one to order shipped. Simple enough. And the great thing about this is we can use it to track our records over time. So, you know, and originally they're going to show up as uncategorized. And then once we receive that order, uh, you know, we can drag this over. Doesn't really matter where they rank in here. Uh, so we can go ahead and, uh, and add them there. And then as we package these orders, we can just move the cards over. Again, all of this data is interrelated. So we're going to jump back into that grid view and see that now we have that status column. It's a single select field, of course. And we've got, you know, these two records have been packaged and these four have orders that are received. Jumping back into that Kanban, uh, then once this is packaged, we can then move it over into order shipped. And the part that I really love the most about using a Kanban view this way is it really helps you go through the steps in a linear sequence and you can see exactly where all these different projects are at a glance. So this is a great way to stay organized if you've got a lot of clients or a lot of projects that you're managing at once and they follow a very similar path. One last piece of advice that I might give for viewing a Kanban like this would be that once this is completed and shipped, you don't necessarily want to see all of those records because imagine if we shipped all of these records that we had hundreds of records that were shipped, we just have this long line here. So you can add a filter just as you can to most other views where you set about certain parameters. So we might say if the status is, uh, is not order shipped. So those records now hold the status of order shipped, but they're not showing up on this Kanban view so that it's not cluttering up all our data. We can prove that to ourselves by again jumping back to that grid view and we see that order shipped is still there in the status. It's just not cluttering up on the Kanban view. All right, as always, I hope you found this to be very useful. If you did, uh, please do give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more Airtable and Zapier content, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Uh, if you have any specific uh, custom work that you'd like to uh, have us take a look at, you can always schedule some time with me on my uh, Calendly. I will include a link in the description of this video. And uh, in the meantime, best of luck as you continue to grow your empire.